Take two. Three, two, one. Thanks for coming to our YouTube channel. Welcome, Victoria. Hello. So this is take two of the morning, take three of the entire session. <laughs> So, uh, Paul finally brought his notes, and Victoria usually does our employee spotlights. In Whoa. fact, I'm going to drag this in a little bit. This is going to make her kill us or something like that. So, Victoria usually does our videos, but I wanted to make a video and to talk to Victoria. And I'm going to allow people on YouTube to see... Some thoughts I have about Victoria. Find out about Victoria. So will you allow people into your life? Uh, yes. Yes, good, good, good. So Victoria, she usually puts, uh, you know, comments and stuff like that. And this is take two of the morning. We only got two minutes into it and I messed up. So a lot of times I'll just give Victoria notes like this. Uh, Sharpies, pens and stuff like that. But I'm learning, Victoria. I have an outline. Ooh. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> so, let's just sit back and, and this whole video, Victoria, this is uh, this is for us to sit back in a couple years and laugh. And uh, you've been here for three months. How long have you been with me? Uh, over three years. Oh, uh, three. Probably going closer to three and a half years. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for persevering. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's start and I could talk a, a mile a minute and stuff like that. I'm going to try to get more information out of you. What do you do here? <laughs> uh, so I, I do a little of everything. Um, I do, uh, payroll. I do HR stuff. Um, I do invoices. So AP, AR, um, also <laughs> do some marketing um updating the website and social media uh yeah so in other words you do everything <laughs> and i do nothing i, don't I just kind of sit around and i, I mean drink i coffee. still have a job so you're doing something oh no, my kidding. goodness <laughs> so a lot of times people call up and they're like oh yeah let me talk to you know i'm like yo victoria is my right hand uh victoria knows everything and sometimes she allows me to run the business so thank you for allowing me. Uh, you're not in charge of the company completely yet. So, but you're also, um, a couple of the key things that you do, you're on the creative side, you do our marketing, you do our videos, um, Adobe. You actually know how to print uh, correctly, <laughs> blueprints to our printers. Yes. Um, you calm down the troops. Sometimes they know that, uh, yeah, the person with the right information is Victoria. So a lot of our guys will call directly Victoria for some clarification. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd yeah, say yeah. So. <laughs> now also what you do is, um, you, there's so much to talk about, but you also, you have organization and we'll get into that for yeah. a simple thing. So, and just for an example, again, uh, I come with some Sharpies and stuff like that. Um, just pure chaos and stuff like that. And then she'll be able to take all these Sharpie notes and stuff like that and make clear interpretation or clear something. Excel is where I, I spend my life. Excel. Yeah, I don't like Excel, <laughs> Excel. And the last time you had a review was October of last year. So my fault, um, we were trying to, to figure out what you can't do and it pretty much, she runs the entire outfit. So creative, calm down. You're like a therapist. Sometimes <laughs> you got to listen to Paul. Uh, you take o uh, chaos and make organization. So a couple of key points that I want to talk about COVID. Mm -hmm. There's that thing. Yeah. How do we survive COVID? Uh, we were very fortunate that we did not skip a beat. Uh, the technicians didn't, the office didn't. We actually at that time were, our guys were at a job site that dealt with, if I'm not mistaken, some type of aircraft warehouse. So yeah. it, was, it was very important that that place stay open. Um, so because we were also under uh, the essential workers category and got the letter to prove it, 
Um, we were able to stay afloat and did not skip a beat at all. Like I said, the guys all had jobs. Um, people were still calling and I had the opportunity to still be able to work remotely. Um, with cats. With with my felines, yes, which made it a little difficult at times. You know, she used to tell me all the time I was working on something and then the cat hit the mouse or something like that. I'm not even kidding you. One time my cat laid on my computer and changed my password and I had to go to Apple to get into my computer. I kid you not. Uh, cats. <laughs> cats. And we get to meet the cats tomorrow. They're coming into the office for the long story short. <laughs> but with COVID, I think with COVID and especially 2019, um... I think you can agree, uh, Paul realized that with your help, oh crap, this is a real business and we're doing real things. Uh, supermarkets, office buildings. And during 2020, we kind of slowed down and we took a BTA class. Mm -hmm. And what was great about that is it was a business training class. It wasn't no $99 special either. Um, you implemented structure. So can you talk a little bit about what you implemented as far as manuals, uh, the Google Drive mm -hmm. documentation? So just briefly touch on what you did. Yeah, so, um, well, I'll start with the, the Google Drive. So um, our lifeline is two Google platforms, Google Schedule uh, or Calendar, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it the Google. I, the Google, so just write the Google. Um, where <laughs> obviously the guys have where they're going, all the information that they need for the job, any documents, uh, then the Google drive, which would house those documents, but then also allow anybody to upload any pictures from the job site, um, any certifications from cables, anything at all, um, that they would need or we would need. And as soon as they upload it, anybody anywhere can, can view it, which is really good for sharing with uh, remote clients. Um, that also need to see that stuff. So that's the, the two main stuff that we first, well, I guess I, I first implemented. Oh, uh, that sounds so bad when I say I, I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> um, it's an honest video. so then, um, taking the course, the BTA course that you mentioned, plus my, uh, HR recruiting, uh, background, we didn't um, get to that yet, though. We'll, we'll go we'll into get it. To we'll get, we'll right. go into it. Uh. Um, was able to create um, a simplified, more direct to the point, easier to read um, handbook or whatever we want to call it, agreement. So that way everybody's not reading like 20 pages of legal stuff and or that they have no idea what it is. It's straight to the point. Very, very much easier. Side note is that the first employee handbook was a 60 page thing that I found off the internet off of some construction company. And I was like, oh, it don't matter, man. This uh, stock options and all this stuff, man, just, you know, whatever. So I think we got it down to like a nine or 10 page. Uh, yeah, and, but a lot of it is, um, it's it's only that large because it's uh, spaced to read easily Ouch, yeah. and uh, it's laid out very simple as opposed yeah, to just true. words. Yeah. Um, but that as well as our hiring process and our interview guides be able to really like also make sure that we have the right people coming on board, but also those people understand what they would do day in and day out. And I, got, I totally forgot about the hiring process. I fought her for years. I was like, I'm more creative, blah, 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 blah. And so now she's involved in the hiring and she has some wonderful uh, personality questions and stuff like that. And it's not so much about technical people. I think you've taught me that you just need to have common sense or, yes, that, you know, that, just that works too. <laughs> what do you work for? You know, yeah. and stuff like that. So you just messed up my whole outline. Ooh. So you went through the back, uh, the background. Moral of the story is, uh, we implemented a lot of things that we did not have before to continue us growing. You just cut me off and kept me on track. Oh my God. Well, all right. So I'm going to back even back, <laughs> confuse everything. So during the COVID, yeah. um, YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube was a critical part and still is. Yes. And sometimes you allow me to do videos and I will not allow you to edit this video. It's going to just going to be up there raw and it's probably going to be a thousand minutes, but I don't care. Um, it's what I want, 
um, YouTube, mm -hmm. um, your experience with YouTube and editing, um, what did you, what do you love about the editing part and what is your dream also with the WWE? <laughs> So I actually, uh, before going into high school, uh, got into video and photo editing, um, went more towards liking video editing. And I actually started out doing video editing, uh, just making like doing like edits to, uh, just songs that I liked, but for WWE, uh, people and things like that, just as like a fan, um, you know, a lot of that vampire stuff I remember, right? Uh, like uh, Vampire Diaries? Yeah, or... I think so. Oh, Shadow Hunters. Yeah, yeah, Shadow that's right, Hunters. that's right. You went to the convention, too. No, it was, it's still delayed from COVID. It's, oh. I think, like, till September. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so I did a lot of video edits as a fan. Um, had a fan site with video edits and put it up on YouTube. Then I went into high school, took, it's very wordy, uh, television, video, and digital media production in all four years of high school. So I got to learn even more about editing as well as uh, actual like directing, like doing interviews, uh, learning the behind the scenes, some more movie stuff. Um, my my dream actually then was to uh, be the director of a Scream reboot, but the too late already happened. The reboot, not the me directing. Um, then not my yet. next then my next goal was to actually work for WWE to do their video packages for pay-per-views, titantrons, anything like that. And one of your favorite moments with your dad was before COVID up in New York yeah. is where? Yeah, so um, April of 2019, uh, me and my dad went to WrestleMania 35, which was at MetLife Stadium, spent the whole week in New York City, went to all the events, it was, it was amazing. Um, I will not trade it for the world, even though it was uh, quite pricey. <laughs> would I do it again? Maybe not because of the price, but it's definitely an experience. And yeah. um, I, I met a, and I the met a first friend. take, the first take mm -hmm. weeks ago, you had said it was historic. It Why? was historic. Well, first, let me tell you, I met a friend. Uh, oh. He was from Canada, and he always happened to sit right by us. My dad thought he was creepy. I was like, he has assigned seats. We have signed seats. He's from Canada. Leave him alone. He's cool. Uh, my dad got lost in the city. Me and my Canadian friend went to find my dad. Did not tell you that about that. He was found by the m, &M store. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so WrestleMania 35 was very historic. Um, you so lost your dad. I lost my dad and found him at M&M's. Um, so WWE obviously is a very male dominant world. Um, and then in 2018, um, I also had the privilege to see history. Uh, January of 2018 in Philadelphia was the first ever Women's Royal Rumble, which was also the main event, which was the first time females ever had a Royal Rumble main event. Um, then October of 2018, got to see the very first uh, all-women's pay-per-view in uh, Long Island at Nassau Coliseum, which was amazing. And then uh, WrestleMania 35, which... Gosh, I'm getting chills just talking about it. Um, was the first ever time women main evented at a WrestleMania, which was the best match ever. It this this pay per view took until like one two a.m. No one left. Everybody stayed, and it was raining during the main event. Everybody still stayed in their seats because they actually wanted to see this match, which like 10, 20 years ago, nobody would have stayed. Yeah. They would have left. The yeah. women's matches were the bathroom breaks. Where the coffee breaks. Um, so it was very, very important for me as a woman um, to be able to witness a lot of women's history, especially in a male-dominated world. Um, and that does give a lot of hope for other women to rise in whatever field they may be in to be like, oh, I can do it too. So maybe I can run some cable. <laughs> well, you know what? While you were talking about this, uh, it's not in my uh, outline, but uh, how do we encourage women to get more in this field? Um, I notice a majority of them are more project managers, mm -hmm. and you get a lot of these old dudes. Uh, you know, they don't want to see women, and you know, uh, uh, women in my life are so smart. Yeah. Um, so, how would you encourage people in this? field to get involved honestly if they have any interest at all um what really interests me i i think is uh 
actually like doing the terminations and fiber slicing. Like I've, I, I am actually itching to even try that. Um, but I Wait, think you said you're into it. Yeah. Right. I mean, the running the cable, I know, I, I know I couldn't go up and down those ladders. Anybody could do. I <laughs> but I think if there's any point in the industry, um, that interests, which go look at the YouTube channel, we have tons of different things that you can see. Um, just say screw it just go go try i mean if you fail you fail at least you tried you all care, right you care since it's a male that. dominated world now i'm going to be doing fiber slices <laughs> <laughs> yeah you were going to do some tones and taxi but today with matt i'm going to have zero uh db loss mm -hmm. not not point oh oh one i don't even really zero. know what that is but i, uh, it's, I guess mm -hmm. it's something important so COVID, you got Strutcher. We did more with the YouTube. Uh, you, you survived your cats. So with the paperwork and, mm -hmm. and kind of, um, you know, uh, your background, you had touched on it. You had some HR experience. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing is you got to diffuse a lot of people and you've got to, sometimes you got to calm down Paul Wallace's words. So how did you learn customer service? Um, oh gosh, how did I learn? That's a loaded question, but your experience, <laughs> you just come in there like a pro. It's, you know, it will be like an avalanche of emotion and then you're just able to... I think, um, so the fact that I have experience in a little bit of uh, all fields, so my first job was waitressing, and that industry probably gets hit the hardest. Um, so I feel like that I got... I learned very early um, about having to diffuse uh, some situations over food and ice cream, surprisingly. No, people uh, are nutty. Cops were called a lot, a few times. For even. Real? Oh my gosh, yeah. There's this, people are insane. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so having that and then also working retail, um, you, you deal with some crazy people that, oof, um, and then working in a call center whole other beast because people are on the phone so now they think that they can say anything they can do anything um <laughs> it but it's, like it, it's insane because um I, I somehow for the most part can keep all of my complete cool when i worked at the call center i actually also worked with my dad but i was a supervisor he he was still a, a phone agent i actually got a uh it was called an escalated call when someone requested a supervisor and it was just a, a blind transfer. You didn't know who you were gonna get as a supervisor. My dad actually got me. Um, and as soon as I got the customer on the line, he is bashing that, oh, this guy did this. He just called him all types of names. And obviously he didn't know he was my dad, uh, but I had to keep my cool and just continue uh, doing what I, what I had to do <laughs> as if it was any other person that he was talking about. It was very interesting. <laughs> well, so you, you you keep all your cool, and I'm going to check the time. Oh, we are already 18 minutes. I don't care. I hope I'll, you guys I'll, still watch it. I'll, I'll rush it up. Yeah, I know, I know. It's supposed to be 10 minutes, but whatever. Um, so uh, how did you do with keeping your calm when you were making those hotel reservations the other day? Yeah, all right. So I'm just... That's I don't saying. like to talk to people that do not listen and are stupid, but when I'm the you customer... Talk to me. But when I'm the customer, it's a different story because the customer's always right. Yeah, you have to listen. Or because if I was on the opposite side, that's obviously a different story. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, 18 minutes, but whatever. Relax. <laughs> can we go a little longer? Should I just speed it up? I don't know, guys. Can we go a little longer? <laughs> uh, all right. Stepping back, uh, I'll try to be uh, whatever. Um, some of the offices were in Willow Grove right now. Uh, we might stay here. What's... You know, when you were first hired, I called you up out of the blue, and I think you had the interview the same day, right? Uh, I th think so, or like the next day. Next day. It was very quick. And uh, how many months of paperwork during your first week did you have? <laughs> I think I started, what, beginning of 2019? I think there might have been stuff from 2018. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. I'm horrible at invoicing. <laughs> horrible oh at invoicing. So, um, you know what? We'll t step back from that. Where are you from, Jersey uh, girl? <laughs> so, I was born in uh, Northeast Philly. Um, lived... You know, let's get that wrong. Lived in, in Philly uh, until I was in the first grade. That's right. Um, and then moved to Jersey. And lived in Jersey until... Gosh, for maybe like 
15 years? No, not 15 years. That doesn't, yeah, 15 years. So I lived there for about 15 years. And then I went back to Philly, yay. And then Jersey, <laughs> I always remember your prom because people think Jersey, the Jersey Shore. What was one guy's outfit going to the prom? Yes, yeah, so I uh, went to prom with, which happened to be the prom king. Uh, no, it was not the queen. Uh, <laughs> so I ended up going to prom with the prom king and, and found out. But um, he wanted to wear a specific tuxedo. Uh, I was completely fine with it. And I'm sure that this is probably <laughs> a section where if I was editing it, I'd show you the picture right here. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Where happening. he actually wore hunting camouflage, a uh, complete tuxedo. And, and he, that, that was a cool thing. Um, my friend the year prior wore a hunting camouflage vest and everybody thought that was cool. My prom date one upped him, so. So in Jersey, there's the Jersey Shore, there's the northern New Jersey with the fancy people, and then we you got the Jersey pines. people. We yep. were pines, pines from the Pine right. Barrens, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you always forget about that. A yep. lot of the guns wheeling. and a lot of big wheels. <laughs> Not big wheels, uh, four wheels. Oh, a lot of the, the trucks, everybody had huge custom smokestacks, and it was a, it was very, um, yeah, very interesting experience coming from Philly from that. <laughs> <laughs> Places you've been. Where, where's, you know, where's one of your favorite places that you travel to? Um, I enjoy Tampa, but I couldn't really enjoy it as much because it was uh, for work. Um, I would, I would love to, to go there to actually, you know, I very much enjoyed uh, my senior trip in Disney, um, and Universal, which I would totally spend all the money to go back to Universal. Um, but let's see, I go to New York a lot, not so much the city, but for, for family, so more so in the mountains. Um, recently, last summer actually, um, went to Washington DC for the first time, um, which I've always wanted to do, which was really cool. Um, however, plan ahead because the free museums book up very fast. It's um, different these days, though, but it, during the COVID That thing. is true, but it, you know what? It is okay, because uh, even though I'm not the uh, fly-by-the-save-your-pants type person, my boyfriend very much is, um, so we were able to finagle it, and we spent uh, one day at least just walking the uh, like the memorial yeah. and the monument, it's all dope. that, and it was, really, it was a really good time, and then uh, we... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, so they have these scooters that, like, you just sit on not sit on your stand on and you just like control and you can just zoom around the city um you can't go by like the white house though like there's like areas that are blocked off yeah you like, can't go by so Whatever. but you zoom around the city and um we had biked originally from the hotel to like, like biked or done the scooter thing. no like biked and oh. oh my gosh i had biked since i was a kid yeah, it was no. killer that's too much exercise. um and they were like huge mountain bikes too so me trying to get up there i'm really short it was horrible um, so we wanted something easier to go back. So we got the little scooters and you just, you know, <laughs> and it was fun. Um, and <laughs> until I forgot how to, uh, stop. And I like, for some reason was just so into it and thought I was still on a bike. Like, you know, like when you stop, you kind of like yeah. put your foot down on a bike. Yeah. You don't do that on a scooter that is motorized. Um, so I put my foot down, Rob goes through, the light is about to turn and the scooter keeps going. Uh, I almost whew, fall on my butt. And this car went by that saw it. And they're like, I saw that! And I'm like, uh. Did someone, you wear a helmet? No. I was like, someone probably recorded that somewhere. I am probably a TikTok somewhere. This is like, repeat. You just see a scooter going up and me <laughs> go flying. But anyway. Oh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it was very. And then he just was like, where'd you go? I'm like, I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> I almost died. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So you've been to D.C., um, back to work, and all right, yeah, Victoria will be like, oh, this is like a TV show, a half an hour. <laughs> so I wanted to, to wrap up. There's so many things that Victoria does. Couldn't survive without her. I would be on a corner scrapping wire, all of these guys, uh, you know, some of the things that she's implemented. She babysits Paul Wallace, she babysits all our technicians, all these experts and everything. 
some of the things, uh, you know, we could talk for hours. There's so many experiences. So this is why I love it. Uh, she implemented vacation. Ugh. She made sure everybody had vacation. Oh, it's horrible. But anyway, so you got vacation rolling. During COVID, we had no protection. You got us on payroll. Mm -hmm. So the one guy said, why don't we have one day off during COVID? Because we were so busy. But we, you gave us protection with the payroll. You yeah. persevered through it. You persevered through the health care. Uh, if I have a boo-boo, I can f pay absorbent amounts of money. Um, so many other things, too, that you made us a real company. Um, we had been doing things by the seat of our pants for years. Um, prevailing wage. You're the one that did all this. Financial records. Bookkeeping. Uh, we actually know what our daily numbers are. Job costs and all this stuff. GSA. Uh, government uh, approved vendor. I don't even know if I'm saying it right now. <laughs> um, the government we're doing stuff for. ADT, all this stuff, all this uh, certification, Hubble, Bixi, however you say it. So uh, Workman's Comp, uh, we have $2 million insurance on work vans. We have all this stuff and it's all due to you. Uh, putting in the hard work, taking my Sharpie notes <laughs> and you know, making sure um, even the, the fact that we have our access to our business account. So two questions for you or one question for you. There's so much that you've done. And I'm so thankful for you. What are you excited for in the path of Bridge Global Services or Bridge Cable? Oh, the legal name. Um, honestly, I'm just excited to see all of this expand even more um because when i came on board it was just like three guys and the one guy was very fresh like he just recently started too um so i'm very excited to get to the point where we have so many teams just we can travel globally not well, maybe not globally not maybe one day globally nationally uh, i mean because we are you know the highest rated nationally Highest rated in the nation. Mm -hmm. And Victoria thought, oh, this guy's just full of, you know, whatever. And you did research. Yes, it, and that he, is a true he did story. make me um, do research. That sounds bad. Make me. Um, My mom made me do it. She's yeah. like, Paul, you can't say all that. Literally like, did the research of all the types of companies on like a whole bunch of states. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. it's proof. Yeah. So I'm wrapping it up. Maybe this is inappropriate, but I'm told all the time it's oh, inappropriate gosh. all the time. So over the years, been doing this since 2006, but you know, there's early years we don't talk about it. <laughs> Haven't had a real job since November of 1999. So I've been doing this for a while, but there was experts around us. And especially these last two years have been tough. Mm -hmm. They've been tough. We've had work, but Paul doing some things, we're trying to expand and stuff like that. And we have expanded. I mean, you know, whatever. So wrapping it up, the experts that were around us, mm -hmm. countless people telling us that we're doing it wrong and we're the only ones with consistent work, 84% retention rate of clients and all this stuff. We have all this Google stuff and we have all these systems and we're doing it wrong. All the experts were saying this. We weren't doing it wrong. One thing that I want to thank you for is is amidst all this confusion and all these analysts that are staring at our business, they always fight me recently and they're like, well, who's this Victoria? And you always had my back and you've always had the bridge cable. Why are you staring at the screen? Oh, because I'm looking at the audience. Oh, that's what oh. you do in interviews. You don't. Just I'm focus. looking at you. I know you don't just focus. This Remember, is a I was trained story. in interviews. I, I know that I continue. <laughs> anyway the experts came in and attacked us and you've always had our back and there's one thing that i've always called you that most people sci-fi people or whatever fantasy people don't know what is i always call and everybody's like what does that mean what do i call you uh the, your needle the needle yeah. because you're like a weapon that just comes in here and you protect us and you make sure that these guys, all these people, all these families 
I always say they depend on me, but you're the one that keeps the, all these families, all these guys, oh, I'm so broke. You're the reason why they have money in their pockets because you keep us going. And I call you the needle. So um, I have a little token that hopefully. Oh boy. What, oh do you, my God. what do you think this is? I don't know, I'm scared. Oh God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, be careful on the point. Yeah, that's you heavy. Do this one. Oh, gosh. I've been dropping things. Well, I guess I uh, officially now also own the needle. <laughs> yes, you know, man. Oh, my gosh. And what is the needle from? Uh, Game of Thrones. Ooh, watch that sword, man. Arya Stark. <laughs> so the needles from the Game of Thrones and stuff like that, and that's this comical thing. Oh, wait. Oh, look, that handle's a little bit weird. We'll fix that in a second. But anyway, to wrap it up, I wanted to thank Victoria, and I wanted to showcase what she does. Um, and I want to, again, thank you for having my back, the bridge cable back. <laughs> and um, I could go on for hours, but thank you for everything that you do for us. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> when I thought originally I was applying for an assistant job. <laughs> <laughs> we can go on for hours. So again, we're going to wrap it up. This is just a little brief thing. Um, hopefully Victoria won't stab me. <laughs> and um, I, again, thank you, Victoria. Thank you. So Say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> That's it. Oh, you like a TV show now. <laughs>